Let's continue now with our discussion of the epithelial tissues. And this time we're going to take a look at the classification of the epithelial tissues. The epithelial tissues are classified based on cell shape and the numbers of cell layers. If we see one layer of cells, then we refer to the epithelium as simple epithelium. If, on the other hand, there are two or more layers of cells, we refer to the epithelial tissue as stratified. I'd like for you to play, pay good attention to the spelling of this word as it's often misspelled. You may see the word strata in here, as in stratosphere, or the different strata of the planet Earth, referring to layers. Now we can take a closer look at the shapes of the cells. And for that, we have three major categories of shapes of cells. We have squamous cells, cuboidal cells, and columnar cells. Again, pay attention to the spelling of these words, particularly the term cuboidal. Squamous literally means flat, and they get that name from the side view. So if we look at the side view of these cells, they kind of look like this. Very flat. There's a nucleus. Here might be another cell. And as a matter of fact, I might now be drawing the endothelium and blood vessel. Now, and so inside of this blood vessel would be blood. There are, for instance, some red blood cells I'm drawing, just for the heck of it. And in there are also some white blood cells. Now imagine, actually, you know, let's make the white blood cells yellow. Now what do these cells look like? I'm sorry, what does squamous what do squamous cells or squamous epithelial tissue look like when we look at these cells from a different angle? Well, imagine that you are one of these white blood cells and you're flowing around in this blood vessel. Remember this blood vessel is coming right at you. It's as if a hose, uh, a garden hose is coming right at you and you just slice through this hose to create this particular cross section. So let's say now that you're one of these white blood vessels and there are pathogens found or detected in the body and these white blood cells need to get out of this blood vessel and go help out with the attack. That means they need to get in between these cells and sneak out, which by the way, they're capable of doing. But imagine now that you are one of these cells and you're looking around as you are inside of the blood vessel and you're looking around and you're looking to find a place to squeeze through. What you're going to see now is the following. Your cells are going to look quite different. They're going to look more like all these puzzle pieces with a nice, usually elliptical nucleus, kind of like that. And so this is more of a t top view, we could say. And so there are different ways of observing these different tissues. Cuboidal cells, fortunately, because the sides of their cells are, or the, 
yes, the sides of the cells are all the same length, you could say. They look very square. And so if we're looking at them from the side, they might look like this. If we may, we can maybe make them look more three-dimensional, like so. But if we look at them from the top, they will still look that same way. Their, char their main feature characteristic, I would say, is their rather large and very dark nucleus. Finally, we get to the columnar cells. And if we look at them from the side, they look very rectangular or almost like columns. Just draw a handful here. If this is the basement membrane, then their nucleus with the connective tissue underneath, of course, then their nucleus will typically sit close to where the blood supply is of that connective tissue. Now, if we make a top view sketch by cutting through these cells, realize that they could look rather round and sometimes almost cuboidal. So we can get confused when we're looking at a top view of columnar uh, tissues. And that's why often you will have to study the deeper layers uh, in order to understand where you are in the body. Now we can combine these two classification systems to come up with the names of our epithelial tissues. And so we have, for instance, simple, and I'll abbreviate here, squamous epithelial tissue. We have simple columnar epithelial tissue, etc., and simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. And of course, we also have stratified squamous epithelial tissue stratified columnar, stratified cuboidal. I'm just going to have you fill those in. Now, in addition to that, we have two oddballs, as I call them, which do not have the term simple or stratified in them. And that is the pseudo-stratified columnar tissue, and we have transitional tissue. You will learn more about these tissues in some of the following video clips. And so this wraps up our introduction to the epithelial tissues. Thanks for watching.